when that when that man because this is really it turns into a currency thing, which turns into mm-hmm. who's the hierarchy in the relationship, right? So some men who do feel as if their woman is the or not feel, but they are the breadwinner, they're gonna play the same role that we've been, you know, programmed to see women play for all these times. But it's funny and it's interesting to me because a man will turn his cheek and be like, yo, you know what? It is what it is. Some women will too. Some women will also, but the funny thing is that man on the flip side that's cheating on that woman and she decides to stay, he doesn't view the women how y'all viewing the man. In a sense of, y'all. No, in the sense of he doesn't have respect for her as a woman no more. He still loves that girl. He's just a cheater. But for y'all to say, hey, look, if a man stays with a girl and he knows she's cheating on him, I can't respect that man. So are men and women the same? Do you think men and women are the same? Do you think that we are supposed to be the same? Like, are we the same? I don't think that we're, in my personal opinion, I don't think that men and women are the same. But I do know that hierarchy will always play play a part in just natural, like, life. So if you are the person who is, especially we're talking about $500,000 to a million dollars a year you're making, you're providing a really dope lifestyle. And at the same time, I mean, and in that same breath, you got to either fall in line or get the hell out of line. I said this here before, women and men have to learn you need to pay to play. If you can't pay, if you can't put up, then you need to shut up. That's it. So in that sense, if that man can't put up the money and he really loves his girl, he got to take what come with it. My thing is, I understand what you said, but you falling in line and playing a role, it just seems weak, especially when I'm the breadwinner. I'm the breadwinner and I'm already not trying i'm gonna say trying for myself not to look at you as less of a man and you know i'm cheating and you're not gonna say anything you falling in line where where are you being a man like come on i'm i'm, I'm being dead ass now i mean he's being a man and it takes I, well it takes strength to stay with somebody who's cheating on you that's first of all yeah, but let's talk about it. Yell at me. Like, let's do it. And then let me, let me say sorry and, like, I'm, let me you know, and, and we'll get back together. Yeah, he's I'm not, I'm not telling you to leave or nothing. That's what I'm saying. But you don't say nothing. What is he checking you for? For cheating? You're going to do it anyway. What do you think? I feel like men and women take. No, if you put question. me in my place, I'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah, you are. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, that's just, <laughs> you're not a cheater. <laughs> you're not a cheater. <laughs> I think that men and women are much more alike than we think. Yeah, yeah I agree. There's a lot more things that are just like human needs and human yes. responses than they are like for men versus women. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep like just staring off into like, who is this guy? Like, I have never heard of such a story. Right. But. That's yeah, I'm sure saying. all this things <laughs> exist. It's like, I really don't think that anyone is experiencing that level of um, violation and not saying anything unless they are there for tangible materialistic reasons. I just, even when you like, like somebody a lot, the idea of them being with someone else, especially through deceit, again, cheating is about deception. If you, it's only wrong when you don't have permission to do it. <clears throat> So if I'm okay with you sharing your body with someone else because we have this lifestyle at home, we need to have a conversation about that. We need to establish that. The deception is where the issue comes in. And so I have a really hard time believing that any man, really any person, but any man would know, even with a woman making this much money, that she's out cheating and he's just not going to address it. But if that is the case, then he's there because of reasons that really probably don't have anything to do with like, heart connection, soul mm-hmm. connection. He's there because it's comfortable. He's there because it's cool. And it's convenient. Hell, he might even be there because he likes her, he enjoys her, but he, he got other, other people too. Thank you. Like, that I ain't love. Thing too. Like, while you so, out of town sleeping with somebody in Jamaica, that is not I'm love. in town sleeping with the girl. <laughs> Next she, think, she think I live in this big house alone. <laughs> He's sleeping with the maid. He thinks, right? Yeah, baby, when you gonna be back that. from Jamaica? <laughs> Let's dive deeper into the conversation, right? Um, and let's talk about what I think could be a potential reason, because I've seen women do it. So if I see women do it, and I know there's a lot of, unfortunately, I call them lame lame men that do it too, right? When you have a history, a pattern of a bunch of relationships where you had the same turnout, in a sense, in this Mm -hmm. topic, maybe you've been dating somebody and three, last three, four relationships you had, all of them cheated on you. At this point, cheating is normal. 
So there is the PTSD that comes with cheating. And there could be an acceptance that comes with just being disrespected in a way that most people probably wouldn't fathom. Yeah. So now let's talk about that part, that aspect of this. You know, we can branch out of this scenario. Yeah. But let's talk about that aspect of dating, the PTSD of dating. Because now maybe somebody could say, hey, look, I don't want to go back into the dating pool for what? I've been cheated on four times. Getting cheated on the fifth is not cool for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might as well just stick with the person who's cheating on me now. Yeah, And he or she does X, Y, and Z for me. It or that could be a way that you push people away as well because of your PTSD. For example, um, let's say I'm accustomed to someone cheating on me. And then in my next situation, I'm just like, I'm not having it. Like Now I'm going to take all of the steps that I have to take to make sure this person doesn't cheat on me. So now I'm like... It's becoming like almost possessive or or like obsessed, like an obsessed, like yeah. a you know something where you're just always trying to make sure. Oh, let me get your location. Let me have your password. Yeah, like OCD. Yeah, it's I just know with that. Yeah, so it's like those are other ways that you know it shows up. a lot of people have dealt with that, and that's another reason why they say like the dating pool is trash or this and that because you don't want people keeping tabs on you, and that's one thing that a lot of people like to try to do these days. Whether it be like, oh, um, let me follow your friends so I can watch their story and see if you're really going out with them, or it's just so many ways to try to keep tabs on people. And I think a lot of people have PTSD in relationships, and they try to prevent things from happening. And I don't really think like. It's a healthy way to date, but a lot of people have to figure out their PTSD PTSD in order to have a healthy a healthy dating. Um, I agree. You know? I feel like all of us get conditioned by the relationships that we have in our lives. Like it's just no way to not. You have to really be intentional to combat it. Mm -hmm. But every relationship conditions you from your parental relationships to your professional relationships. They all kind of form for you this like, oh, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. This is like. Normal. I mean, I've hired people and they're like, oh, I never did it like this before. Yeah. <clears throat> they're saying that from what other jobs they had before they worked with me. Um, and so I do think that can happen. It's conditioning negatively or conditioning positively. My personal experience, I had that in a relationship um, years ago. All my relationships pretty much from like high school up until 30, I was very used to like bickering like that was just such a natural thing and bickering like aggressively like, like yelling bicker? both of us would like oh, whoa. like it would if if we had a rough patch we would argue like loud yell never like physically abusive but it would be like you no you shut up no you shut up blah, 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 blah. like that whole thing mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I met a man that the first time that happened mm -mm. like I felt so stupid because he <laughs> looked at me and was like why are you yelling <laughs> and like calmly just yeah. like why are you yelling and I was like I don't even know <laughs> I don't have an answer to that because right. I legit don't know but that then showed me there's another way and he was like yo we can disagree you do not have to raise your voice we do not have to curse we can have a, a discourse and and do it calmly and literally for the four and a half years we were together we never had like a spat like a we disagreed plenty of times but Someone it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was so good. So I I've am not the arguing that. type. So now, like, I, am. I would go to the top it. of my lungs. But me, listen. And Wait. it's so uncomfortable, right? Like, after you do, like, my whole body will be shaking. Like, I'm like, dog, I need like two days to come down off of this fight. That's because why he's arguing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe four. Yeah. That but, can stop a relationship for me. Yeah. I'm no, like, if sure. you like to do too much and argue too much, look, this ain't gonna work out. You see how you get me? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. it's no, not, it's you're really making you me act because yeah. once I get to that level, I turn like no, to a Tasmanian devil. Crazy. Like, now let's to, just fight. I wanted to take um a word that you said or a phrase that you said. And I wanted to also dive in on it on uh can, we are all it's not verbatim. Mm -hmm. We are all conditioned by our past relationships. Yeah. Good and bad to our own detriment is what I'm adding. Yeah, for sure. Because the problem that I've then realized is that I say this all the time. Y'all heard me say it earlier. There's probably, in my opinion, there's only 20% of good women, 20% of good men. Now, the problem is if you experience one of these or maybe even two of these, your conditioning or your past relationship, those bars are really high. So when you get back to reality, which is that dating pool that everybody's complaining about, that don't exist over there. That's that 80%. So now we have to, now my question is, how do we get out of the conditioning that we think that, oh, I deserve this because I experienced this. It could be, you know, roses every week. It could mm. be trips three times a year, four times a year. 
But realistically, not everybody is able to do that same upkeep and meet that bar that you're setting. So is the dating pool really trash or are our expectations from our previous relationships been the bar has been set too high? I feel like it's a mixture of both, right? I do think dating is difficult. As a single woman, um, dating can be challenging. <clears throat> um, it, it's And it's a lot of things. I ain't going to go into all the reasons why I think it's challenging. But I also think, yes, your standards can, they can sometimes be a, a, like a, a what you were saying, like an obsessive reaction to what you dealt with. Like it becomes like I'm trying to damage control every little interaction and that's impossible to do. You cannot damage control every single thing. You have to start people off with a clean slate. You have to give everybody a new opportunity, but also have your standards and stand on them and make sure that they're realistic. Like I, we, I'm sure most women can write a list of 20 to 30 things we would love to have in a person. But then you have to prioritize those things and be realistic about, like, in order. Like, some of these things I may not get, am I okay with not getting a man with a six-pack? Yes, I'm okay with that. If he's the top 10 things or the top five things, then we could probably work with, you know, we could probably work with it. I think we all have to be realistic about that um, and not come in over controlling because you made bad decisions in your past. Because some of it is about bad choices and some of it is about a bad person or a person who just wasn't in a position to, to be in the relationship with you in the right way. So I don't know. I, I just I think you have to start fresh and you have to be really accountable to you um, so that as you're going forward, you're being sensible. You're being sensible about it all. And remembering that nobody's perfect. Are you perfect? Do you no, have, of course not. You know, like, yeah. do you have all of the things that someone is looking for? So sometimes it's not just the dating pool. It's like we're a part of the dating pool. So yeah. obviously if something isn't working, what is it that I could be doing wrong? And I think that's important as well, like acknowledging, okay, I have some stuff that I need to work on in order to make, you know, a relationship work a lot of times. And I feel like a lot of times we forget that. Part. Yeah, that we're, I'm not perfect. Yeah. I got some yeah. shit with me. So. I always... I be hearing this, I know what I want. <laughs> I know what I No, you don't. Men know, but men <laughs> say that too. No, 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 no. Them, th listen, anybody who's running with the narrative of I know what I want, to me, you're closed-minded. You haven't gotten all of those things in one person, so you're not being realistic. Because if you did get all those things with that one person, you'd still be with them. So, like, I think that when we have to also come down to that, come down off of ourselves and say, because a lot of the things that we want, in my opinion, is only what, society has told us we should have what we deserve mm -hmm. right and if we come down off that you know pedestal that we put ourselves on and just be more mindful about what the world really is we could probably understand that the dating pool is not as bad as it is now in my opinion it's filled with a lot of leftovers mm. right because the good ones are usually going to word. be taken mm -hmm. but there are some people who fumble the bag and you might luck up, but you got to understand that they're not going to have all five things. They might only have three. But that's even that's not always true because we always hear about divorces. We always hear about people who like, you know, you may have picked the wrong person. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad, you're not a catch, you know? It's just that you spent 10 years with the wrong person. Now you're back in the dating pool. So we can't even say like, those types of things because every day it's a new person that's getting thrown back in a dating pool. And they, fall and they the ain't do shit. Yeah, but like... <laughs> You know, well, and now they have catch too. The yeah. one that you're leaving, they're just not a catch for you. Exactly. There's it somebody else's catch. In the dating pool. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think some people, sometimes people get into relationships based off of, oh, I need to check this off my list, check this off my list. Yeah. But like, what about just having genuine good chemistry? Yeah. What about meeting someone that you can genuinely work with and, you know, is able to, you know, understand you in certain ways? So I think sometimes that is also like. I feel like some people are afraid to leave it up to that. Because it's just like sometimes when you get in a really good groove with someone and you, you know, you start to like them and you guys have good chemistry, they check no box. Mm. Maybe, <laughs> maybe one or two, but it's just like, only that's not enough. Box. But it's right. just like, how are you surviving? <laughs> <laughs> like, can you decide, all right, I'm going to just be with a woman? Like, you know? Okay, so, anyways, yeah, but like, it in is. The <laughs> It is. No, because to have that, you know, like, that's you ever feel shame. like you need that masculine feel? Like, you need somebody to be like, yeah, come here, girl. <laughs> Much. I don't want no man <laughs> to say that to me. Is he just drunk? <laughs> so, okay, so like when it comes to the dating pool, I feel like if you, for example, me, 
I know I like a certain look sometimes or like a lot of people when we hear women say all the time, oh, he has to be over whatever height, 5'11". Who knows? I don't know. Whatever girls say. It's six but feet, if you, child. Let her, let her stick with the 5'11". Thank you. <laughs> right. But like, you know, everybody has these certain things. So if you are already going into the dating pool expecting these things that you've put on your list, you're going to assume, oh, the dating pool is trash. But you're looking for things that are just... Unrealistic. Yeah, they're unrealistic. And they're not going to help you find a good person. You're not looking for a good person. You're looking for like certain things that are not going to make you have a successful relationship. So I don't think I don't think necessarily the dating pool is bad. I just pe think people are looking in the wrong direction or they're not really. But so that actually relates to what Marie said. If you look around mm -hmm. and you not snag you in the 80 and you can't snag somebody in the 20. Mm -hmm. That lets you know you're in the 80 and you should be looking in the 80. Right. It, it gives you a vast amount of people to look at now. So of this 80 percent of men or women why can't you find somebody? Mm -hmm. And so that should put your your checklist in check because that means your checklist is not uh, parallel to reality. It's not to parallel reality, to, to, to exactly to your reality. Mm -hmm. And I remember I said this the other day, like you can't make twenty five uh, thirty two thousand dollars a year looking for a man that makes one hundred and eighty nine <laughs> a year. I mean, can can it happen? Yes. Anything is possible. However, what is the likelihood of it happening? One percent chance. It's not, exactly. It's not that likely. So do you want to keep spinning your wheels every day, running into the wrong kind of men, men which are men who don't want you, or men who are not good for you, or men who will not, can't even have a fucking conversation with them? Like, are you going to keep spinning your wheels with these kind of people? Or are you going to, like, bring yourself into reality? Are you going to quit being delusional? When like the delusion is what's killing us. Like you think you are, you think you're so great, and you deserve somebody else. No, what, what do you qualify for? And you say this all the time, Rico. What do you qualify for? And I'm not saying to like down yourself. It's great to have self esteem and this, that, and the other. But come on now, self esteem does not include delusion. No, it don't. You know, well, in 2023, it's, it, you know, it helps. Right. It helps the self esteem. I'm not gonna but lie. You know what it, also is help. another thing too is that. There are some men, and there are some women, who couldn't pick a good partner if I gave them ten, and I only, and I, they had to choose one out of ten, and all ten were good partners. They still missed the mark. I think a lot of that though is because we are constantly thinking there's something more. Yeah, yeah. We never, we're never content, and not like in a settling type of way. Like we are never content. It's yeah. like this person is ninety percent of what I want gotta be a 99 out there it's like that is so ridiculous it is especially once you get to a certain point in life and you know that you may want certain things that are biologically controlled like you want a family how long are you gonna chase 99 percent if you if you 47 and at one point how long are you gonna chase that? and at one point it's not necessarily settling because we talk about settling all the time at one point once you get to a certain percentage, okay, you're not settling. You're just, now you're just, you, you yeah, delusional. Yeah, now you're much. just looking, because ain't nobody out here 100%. Right. 